this night where we are looking into uh, living clarity of life. Angela, uh, she's uh, a life coach. She will help us to put things into perspective of what you need to know or what you need to understand as life uh, is of concern. And this is a continuation of a topic or a conversation uh, we had here uh, last time with Patricia on um, uh, personal development. Now we're looking into how now can we live with that. Now healing with clarity of purpose where you should know that you are worthy of all that uh, the beauty and abundance that the universe has in store for you. Loving yourself wholly, unconditionally and fiercely no matter what. But then we need to understand what is this uh, clarity of life. Good evening Angie. Good evening. Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for having me. You know, uh, since since we got to know each other, I have never had an opportunity to host you. I always have to refer you to someone. <laughs> and yeah. This is always the first time. All right, here yeah, it is. Yeah. So when you're speaking of clarity of purpose, mm -hmm. what do we mean? First of all, it's, uh, before I answer clarity of purpose, it's to get to understand what purpose is. And purpose is your why. What, mm -hmm. is, why, what is your why? And uh, when you talk about purpose of life is uh, your why of being alive. Why are you created? Why, why were you born? Why did God choose mm -hmm. for you to survive out of all the billions of sperms that were produced at that time? Mm -hmm. <laughs> why you? You yeah, know. Yeah. So there's a reason why you survived. There's a reason why you have you're here and it's because you're destined for something that everyone has a reason everyone has a purpose mm -hmm. and this purpose you have to define it the earlier the better because when you when when you see people behaving or living in a life of uh, like they, they are not sure what they're supposed to be doing mm -hmm. today you're working in a salon tomorrow you're working in a bar the other day you're working in a church the other day you go back to the bar the other day you know you don't know what you're supposed to be doing that is because they don't know their purpose. Mm -hmm. And uh, clarity of purpose is now being clear. Being clear because there's nothing as important in life as being clear about what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So how do you work on your purpose? How do you develop it? How do you even live your purpose? Mm -hmm. That's now having that clarity. Exactly, and that's where I want us. To, I want you to take us because many people would say, like you have just uh, given an example of you work in a bar, then you somewhere else. Someone would say, I'm multi-talented. Mm -hmm. I have so many gifts. I can do A, B, C, D at the same time. So how now do I sit down and identify this is my strength, this is my area, mm -hmm. and then how now do I move in to perfect that which I have identified within me. You know, uh, the, uh, the main goal of life is happiness, right? Mm -hmm. the, main, the reason why I wa want someone wants to be a doctor is because they think that being a doctor will make them happy. The reason why somebody has become a pastor is because they think that touching lives or maybe preaching to people will make them happy. So the main goal is happiness. Now, when you're doing all these things that you think you're talented in, mm -hmm. are you fulfilled? Because when you're fulfilled is when you realize now the inner happiness. It's when, you know, you can bounce. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can walk and, you mm -hmm. know, you get your, that working style that, you know, that defines you, that makes you uh, be happy. So the main purpose of finding happiness is actually just being happy. True. Yeah. Now, uh, when you're, you're finding your happiness and doing what you feel, this is what I've been called for. Of course, there are relationships. We say we all need shoulders to lean on. Mm -hmm. How do one now create networks? Having healthy relationships, let me speak also. We are all social beings. No human being is created to be on their own. We are all social beings. And that's why nowadays you find that uh, because of the lockdown, people are in the house, mm -hmm. they are... They, 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 their minds are, you know, they're not thinking straight because there's no that connection. And even you find that marriages are breaking up because you're only connecting with that person that uh, you've, uh, you know, <laughs> that you married just because of the wrong why. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So us being uh, social beings, you need, you have to connect with people. And there's no place 
uh, of purpose that you will find yourself not being able to connect with people because we are created for a purpose. And purpose is being of service to somebody, to, to other people. So who are you serving? You might say that I'm going through so much, I'm, you know, I'm going through a lot of pain and how can I be of service to somebody? But guess what? Your pain is even supposed to be helping somebody. Mm -hmm. So we go through uh, life because whatever we go through has a reason. And it's, be, it's uh, meant to, you know, to touch other people's lives. It's supposed to be for others, not for ourselves. We don't live for us, for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Neither we will lead, will we die for ourselves. Mm -hmm. We will die for another reason. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, speaking of the relationships and uh, being there for each other, there's something that I feel has been a problem with so many, and that is about the boundaries. How do you create your boundary? How do I define someone's boundary? Uh, <coughs> you will speak of the current events where I will need someone to stand with me. And then I f we end up being enemies because maybe I asked for an help mm -hmm. or maybe I asked it in the wrong way. How do I define my own boundaries and how do I get to learn someone's boundary? One thing about clarity is that it makes you have those boundaries and being firm. There is, um, you know, we, we are told that, uh, even the Bible say that you, when you're asking, ask with clarity, ask ask and it shall be given to you. Mm -hmm. It didn't say nag or it didn't say, <laughs> uh, you know, cry for it. You know, it, I don't know. You've seen uh, people who go through issues and they are always in the church praying and they, you know, they, they never get their answers. And I'm not God, I can't, I can't tell why, but mm -hmm. from my own perspective as a person and from my own development and uh, my own personal development, I've, um, come to realize that when you ask too much from God, it's like you're nagging. Mm -hmm. And he didn't say that you nag, he just said ask. I've heard you from, mm -hmm. the, you know, from the first time. So now uh, when, because now God said that we need to ask and it shall be given, just ask. Mm -hmm. So the same way that God wants us to be clear, to be clear about what we want, we need to ask ask for it and we ask with clarity because there's power and clarity mm -hmm. you also need to be very clear about connections about people how uh, you need to know yourself because one um, one cannot ask clearly when they don't even know what they really want because mm -hmm. number one um, number one uh, reason or way of being clear or being firm is to you know to know to know what is it that I want Mm -hmm. And then you ask, you have your why. So why do I want it? What is it that I want and why do I want it? The why comes before the how. Mm -hmm. Then you find the how. So you start learning on how to do it, or whatever it is that you want to ask. Mm -hmm. So you first need to be very clear of this is what I want. And then, you know, why do I want it? Why do I really want it? Mm -hmm. And then uh, how do I find it? How do I, the how, the learning about it. So you start learning skills on how to, to even relate with people. So you need to have your clear whys. Mm -hmm. Don't just say, I want space or I want, you know, I want a boundary, mm -hmm. but you don't have your why. You need to, to be clear. Mm -hmm. All right, with that, we'll be taking a very short break. And you have known building a relationship, you need to know the why and then the how. Then you know how to approach your friend. Let's take a very short break. We'll be back with now moving to professional life. How do you build a professional life in clarity? Don't go too far. Why? Two five four. Iman. Why two five four? Iman. Thank you for keeping us company. And if you just tuned in, this is Y254 Health and Lifestyle Wednesday tonight. We are talking about. Uh, healing with clarity of purpose and now we are moving to building a healthy professional life how do you do that i'm speaking to angela Nzilani. she's a life coach yes now how do i build a healthy professional life now that i have realized what i want i'm doing what i love i'm working with people how now uh, do i live professionally 
Um, okay, first is to believe in a dream. Have a dream. Have a dream and believe in it. You know, like I said that you need to know what you want. Mm -hmm. And if you know, already know, you know what, um, if you already know that this is my purpose, this is what I'm supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. then you need to know why do I really, you know, why is my purpose, uh, why, do, why is it that this is the purpose that I'm supposed to be working on? And then now you start learning how. So you have to invest in the learning. And investing doesn't really have to be in terms of money. It can be in terms of time. Money, of course, sometimes comes in to take a part, mm -hmm. to play a part, but it's good to, um, to know that there are so many resources out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I can give you maybe an example of myself. When I, went, when I finished high school, I went to do CPAs, mm -hmm. that's accounting. Wow. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> I finished my accounting and uh, I got a job with an Indian farm. Mm -hmm. And at the Indian farm, I was doing, I was like uh, now the multitasking. Okay. I was a jack of all trades. I would do mm -hmm. so many things. I was doing um, sales. I was in charge of the payroll, in charge of uh, I was the cashier. Mm -hmm. I was the one in charge of ma managing the office, make sh making sure it's clean. I could fire and hire. All the commissions <laughs> in the sales were yours. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah, so I would do all those things. But some part of me, the only part of me that I loved was the bit about uh, selling. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, so I, I started now feeling that uh, maybe I should go into marketing. So I enrolled myself into a marketing degree. Mm -hmm. I did marketing, but I've never done any marketing. It, when, I, when I now came to learn what really marketing is, mm -hmm. it's a, well, people used to tell me that you, because you talk too much, you, you are vocal and you know, mm -hmm. you can go out there and market. But I never had the skill. It never came in, even, going, even after going through the training, mm -hmm. it never really resonated with me. I, it never fulfilled me. Mm -hmm. So I continued at, and um, along the way, I became a contractor. So now you see these are how many? Three, mm -hmm. three careers oh, already. Yeah. So I became a contractor and I combined being a contractor with being a farmer mm -hmm. who was also constructing greenhouses. And then, and an accountant. And, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and along the way, I never still wasn't fulfilled mm -hmm. until I discovered my purpose so late in uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. Now, in 2018 is when I started now working on uh, myself, learning new things, training, going for training, um, listening to other speakers out there and you know just learning and learning it's been a day every day has been a day of learning mm -hmm. so you have to invest on the learning it doesn't matter when you discover your purpose but i said earlier that when if you discover your purpose early enough the better for you mm -hmm. i if we have parents who are watching i would encourage them to help their children at their younger age as they they go through their career path let their career be in line with their purpose. So let, well, let us help our children to learn what purpose is, to learn why they are here, the, why they are created, to learn how to even discover that purpose. Mm -hmm. And then they will now uh, choose careers that are in line with, uh, you know, with the uh, careers that are in line with their purpose mm -hmm. so that we don't have all this, uh, you know, mix up of life like mm -hmm. I did. I, <laughs> I, if I had a better guidance, I would have, uh, I would have uh, maybe come out stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, uh, there's an aspect of life where people kind of uh, uh, neglect and maybe could have um, a positive impact on their life, and this is their spiritual connection. Um, and even uh, coming even to church or the people in church, because even in the marketing itself, I'm sure you interacted with people from all sorts of fields. Mm -hmm. How does one build their uh, um, spiritual connections? whatever religion they, they ascribe to? So we have to believe that there's an, uh, an upper power mm -hmm. than ourselves. There's somebody who controls things, not mm -hmm. us. We are not the ones in control. There's somebody who connects us with things. And that's why he said that we should ask him. No matter what uh, your, you know, your, your faith is, 
it doesn't it doesn't really matter you still believe in a god or or, or some somebody up at, or above who is above you mm -hmm. so you we need to to lean on that person we need we have to lean on that person you know to ask for whatever we want and we will find it mm -hmm. we we just need to ask because spirituality is important mm -hmm. we cannot live without it mm -hmm. even those who are pagans they still believe there is a faith in, in them mm -hmm. there is a faith that says you know faith doesn't have to be like okay there are degrees of faith mm -hmm. so what they have is just little faith <laughs> you need to have the mustard seed faith <laughs> yeah All so right. that they just have very little faith it's mm -hmm. it's not because they don't believe God is there. God is there, and we have to, you know, to, to keep on talking to Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, what I want us to talk about now is a very sensitive area, uh, and this is uh, sexuality having a sexuality life, um, positive um, aspect of life in terms of sexuality and gender. We have been calling for gender equality. Uh, we have been seeing women in power. Um, how relating with people now, how do you now become, uh, define your position, whatever gender you are in, uh, that you may not maybe subject others to feeling like they are not important? Sexuality is, um, we are all equal, okay, what I can say. <laughs> we are all bearers of a spirit. Mm -hmm. We are all souls. Mm -hmm. So if we look at ourselves first as a soul, then all these other things, you will not define yourself too much, you know, leaning so much on because I'm a woman, I should get favors. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a woman, I should be, you know, the leader. But it, it, the leadership should come from my qualities as a person. Mm -hmm. what, what makes me better? We cannot be the same. There are, there are men who, you know, they are leaders in their homes, but they cannot lead in a company. They are led by women. Mm -hmm. So we need to just understand that we are first souls. Mm -hmm. And you as a soul are very, very, very tiny in this world. Very tiny. If you look at all the creation that God did, mm -hmm. we have the universe. We have, I was listening to a talk by some motivational speaker. I'm forgetting his, his name. Sings goalie something like that mm -hmm. and he was talking about um, how small one person is then he was saying what if God really forgot you, you exist because you're too tiny that <laughs> <laughs> he cannot even see you <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah so it's just funny that he could come up with that but we are souls first so you need to look at yourself as a soul and uh, talking that uh, maybe taking you back to spirituality we have to personalize spirituality you have it has to be personal mm -hmm. it's not supposed to be dependent on who your pastor is or which church you go to or who are your parents it's supposed to be very personal so how i interpret my own spirituality mm -hmm. how i interpret my own even my own soul my own sexuality should be very personal how um, and it should be personal in a way that it suits you it, it works for you so don't just don't just do things because people are doing them don't go to you know uh, offices because uh, expecting to get favors because you're a woman and your boss is a, is a male mm -hmm. or expecting to you know to lure this woman to giving you a promotion or something like that mm -hmm. work for it let us uh, be, be genuine be authentic in getting the right things you know what what we deserve mm -hmm. in the right way mm -hmm. yeah so oh, all right as as we wind up now i have realized myself i know this is the area that i am good in i am uh, knowing my sexuality i'm living in a, a healthy sexuality life i have connected well spiritually money is coming now mm -hmm. how do i have healthy finance management without having to uh, maybe put my money to usury um hmm, financial but you know money money makes a difference a very good difference oh money is good mm -hmm. but as many times we interpret we, the way we relate to money is the way it comes to us or mm -hmm. it stays money can only stays stay where it is respected so we must be uh, very humble, even when it comes. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, when you treat it with so much humility, it will stay. 
it, mm -hmm. it behaves like a person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you get money and you start you know dishing it out anyhow, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. like like myself what I did and mm -hmm. it went. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it happens. It happens to so many people and it will stay where it is respected. Mm -hmm. So you need to learn a little bit about how to handle money. You know everything is about learning. Nobody is non knowing. I mean, is born knowing everything. Mm -hmm. So whatever. What any, any new skill that you need, like managing money, managing property, you know, investing, knowing how to invest and, and all that, mm -hmm. you need to learn all these things. But if you get it and it's too much and, uh, you, you know, you don't even take time to learn, mm -hmm. then it will just, because you've not taken time to learn, it will just uh, somehow vanish. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. <laughs> all right. Nitimia vizuri ama nikanyange kubwa kubwa. You final comments. This is your camera. Maybe you would like to encourage someone out there as we finish. Um, okay. Relating to our topic today, clarity of purpose, it's important that we all find our purpose. It's important that we all uh, keep on growing ourselves because when you find your, your purpose, or when you know why you're here, it's inevitable you will start finding happiness, you'll start growing yourself, you, you know, invest in, uh, in coaches, invest in even learning in yourself. If you cannot, on your, on your own, if you cannot afford to, you know, to afford a coach, there are so many ways of learning. So it's inevitable. It is the only sure way to finding happiness, which is the ultimate purpose of life. So I would encourage people to just find their purpose, their purpose early enough and be clear. All right. Thank you so much, Angie, for coming. And truly, we will try and get to learn something and realizing who we are. We were speaking about our clarity of purpose, having uh, known what you want and knowing where you're heading to. It's good to keep on learning. We will never stop learning. Thank you so much. And back home, thank you so much for keeping us company. She has been my guest, Angela Nzilani. She's a life coach. And my name is Edereva Hilary. I was uh, sitting in for Patricia Morioki. I'll be sit seeing you again on Monday next week. Keep it Y254. Enjoy the rest of our programming. Good night and goodbye.